My Jesus is my victory. I believe in Jesus Christ. I believe in the power of the Holy Spirit. I believe in the love of God. I believe the blood of Jesus cleanses me of all sin. I believe that God made eternal life for me available within His Son, Jesus Christ. And I believe that I get forgiven within Jesus Christ of all my sins. When I confess my sin and turn my back on the sins, He blotted out my transgressions so that it will not be existence of my transgressions anymore. I've been justified by the blood. The blood of Jesus Christ, the Son of Man, the Son of God, the Son of David. Give God a hand for the man Jesus. Everyone say, thank you, God. Thank you, Father, for the name of Jesus. Thank you for the Son of Man that cleanses our sin. In Jesus' name. Give God a great hand. Amen. Bless everyone around you. Thank you, Jesus. Take your seat and let's listen to God's word tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus, God is always good. And we trust that God will tonight minister to your heart in the name of Jesus. My message is, how does a man get, man get saved? Some people say you can do nothing to be saved. But the Bible says something else. Um, it was, it, we believe in Jesus. Amen. But believing in Jesus is a package. The number one portion of this package, the apostle Peter said, you need to repent of your sins. Give God a hand. Amen. How do you get saved? You need to repent of your sins. Amen. That means that you turn away from your sins. You ask God to forgive you of your sinful ways. And then you walk in the opposite direction and you become a different person. Because the Bible says then when we repent and we get baptized, then we are in Christ Jesus. Then we are new creations within Jesus Christ. Then the old things have passed away, and behold, everything became new. This is 2 Corinthians 5, verse 17. If anyone then is in Christ, he's a new creation. The, behold, the old things have passed away. Everything became new. You're a new person now. I mean, with a new nature. Give God hands for the new nature. Hallelujah. So what, what will you do to be saved, life? The Bible says here, it says here in um, Hebrew 13, verse, verse 3, it says that God, it's verse 8, 13, verse 8, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Give Jesus a hand. Amen. I need to take you quickly to the Bible. We go to the book of Acts. God is good. Amen. Pray, Lord God, as I read your word, change my life, please. In the name of Jesus. I take you to Acts 2 verse 1. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all gathered in one place. That's after Jesus went to the heavens. And then when they gathered, because Jesus said, do not leave Jerusalem, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit come upon you, and then you will be my witnesses. Hallelujah. When the power of the Holy Spirit came upon you, he said, do not leave Jerusalem, because you need to receive the Holy Spirit now. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place, in one accord. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came down. The blowing of a violent wind. Not shh. A violent wind. The blowing of a violent wind. I like that. I like the power of God. Give God a hand. Amen. That is the power in the New Testament Christian's life. The Holy Spirit come upon you like the blowing of a violent wind in Jesus' name. I don't want a soft wind. I don't want a gentle wind. In order to do God's work, I want a very violent wind to blow on me so I can preach to people the great power and grace that comes to save souls and to deliver people from demonic Curses and demonic power in Jesus' name. Many people today believe there's not even devils. They believe people do not have devils. The people in traditional churches do not believe there's devils. They don't believe people can be possessed by devils. And even in our province, there's so many people possessed by devils. 
and you cannot cast out these devils with a soft wind. You need to have a, like a violent wind blowing on you. So the Holy Spirit came down, blowing down on them like a violent wind, and that's what you need. Pray, Lord God, I need the blowing of a violent wind. I need your Holy Spirit upon me like that. In Jesus' name. Amen. I've ministered many places in my life. Not only here, but I minister to people, to rural areas, many places. Malawi, Mozambique, and other places. And I came to realize, you cannot come there with nice, soft wind. You need to come with the great power of the Holy Spirit. Jesus said, do not go unless you got this power. Amen. So, when the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place, in one accord. Suddenly a sound, suddenly a sound, like the blowing of a violent wind, came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be the tongues of fire. What seems to seem to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them, Satan is to, I think we need this fire. Amen. I need this fire, you need this fire. I had this fire, I got this fire, but we need more of this fire. In the mighty name of Jesus. All of them were filled, baptized with the Holy Spirit. And began to speak in other tongues. As the Holy Spirit enabled them to do so. Some people say, oh, that's only on rare occasions where people speak in tongues. What do you think I do now? Well, is this tongues real? Let me tell you a, a very great testimony. I hope great people listen. Because you need to give your heart to Jesus tonight and you need to believe in Jesus' name. I went to Malawi. I was at the Sherry River. The Sherry River, River there is the border between Malawi and Mozambique. And the customs and the crossing from one country to another country is actually a joke because they stamp your passport on a tree trunk on the side of Mozambique. You go from Malawi, it's the Sherry River, and you go from Malawi with a canoe, a very long canoe where people load their boats, load their goats, their bicycles, their bags of maize, and the people and the babies and chickens and everything. The goats, the chickens, everything is on this boat, this long canoe. And there's one man who rode this boat. Now, they all got big arms because they do it every day. It's like a taxi system going over the Sherry River. Now, the Sherry River is not the Limpopo. It's not the Fall River. It's a river. In South Africa, we do not know what rivers is. Those are rivers. Huge river, very strong. And these guys go along this, this, the site where the stream is not strong. And then they go, they know if they go, now start to cross, and there's one man rowing, they always got huge shoulders and huge arms. Rowing with, with one, um, what do you call it, life? Respawn. A paddle. With one paddle. One man, one paddle. And he, they, they know the trick. They go up the river, and then when they know they're going to get to the other side, up, up, far, far more up than they want to get out. And then they rush across the river as far, fast as they can, and they just make it because they know exactly how to do it. And there's crocodiles in those rivers. And the boat then, the canoe is just, just above the water. I was looking at this, I thought, whoa, 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 wow. And then I came to the other side where they stamped it, the passports on a tree trunk. That's the border post. And the custom officer was down with a tree trunk, no office, nothing. And then I started to speak. I just felt like speaking in tongues. There were a couple of people, the Malawians, Chichewa people. And I started to speak in tongues like I did now. And I stop. And I stop. And they were listening to me with eyes. I said, but these people are listening to me. They looked at me. I went on. And they all said, Amen. And I thought, How do, do they know what I say? And I asked them, Do you know what I say? They said, Yes, we understand everything you said. I was speaking in Chichewa. Give God a hand. Amen. The people were very much surprised. 
I was speaking to Chichewa. And I shared the gospel with them. And they said, Amen. So if you doubt, if this tongues that I speak has power and comes from heaven and is uh, understandable by other people or angels, you need to rethink. Amen. Amen. That was an amazing day. Give God a hand for that. Amen. Hallelujah. God is good. On this day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit was poured out. They all spoke in different tongues. Some were other languages, etc., etc. There's different languages. There's languages of angels, and there's languages of the heavens, and then there's languages of other people that we don't, cannot speak. But when we need to get to these people, we speak in tongues, and they understand us. As we keep on speaking, we preach the gospel to them, but we ourselves do not know actually what we're saying. God is so good. Give him a great hand. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. They speak in other tongues as the Holy Spirit enabled them. Now there were many there staying there in Jerusalem of different languages, God-fearing Jews from every nation under the heaven. When they heard the sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment. And that's what's the way with the people in the world today, the religious people of traditional churches. They hear these things. They are bewildered. What are you doing? You're crazy. You are crazy, you guys. What are you doing? They say we are false, etc., etc. But let me read the Bible to you, my friend. Amen. Hallelujah. They were bewildered. Say to guys, it's a good thing if you get bewildered by God. Because each one heard their own language being spoken. Utterly amazed. They ask, aren't all, aren't all these who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us heard them in our own native language? Now, all these Jews stayed in many different countries, and they then couldn't speak Hebrew anymore, Clive. They spoke all the different languages where they came from. Parsians, Medes, and all these other places, and they call all the names, and I'm not going to mention them all from all these different places, Pontus and Asia and uh, Shrikshia and all these places and Egypt and other parts of Libya near Cyrene and all these places, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism. Clive, there were many people that was now converted to become Jews, were not born Jews, many of them, Cretans and um, Arabs, um, we hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own languages and our own tongues. Give God a hand. Amen. Amazed and perplexed. Some people were amazed. Others got perplexed. Many people, if they hear this gospel, they get perplexed. Perplexed. They do not know what's going on and they get unhappy. But it's a good thing. Because at least their, heart, their hearts is now seeking the truth. Amen. Amen. Amazed and perplexed. They asked one another. Say to guys, some were amazed and others were perplexed. They asked one another, what does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them like the people do today and said, they have had too much wine, they thought, like the people do today. I say churches like this, we got too much wine. We do funny things. They are bewildered because of what we do. Some are perplexed about what we do. They had too much wine, some joked. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice because he was now baptized in the Holy Spirit. He had now the boldness and the courage to do because the Holy Spirit gave these things to you. Amen. Then Peter stood up with the eleven. And raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. We, we, these people are not drunk as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. The bottle stores are not yet open, I suppose. Amen? I, I, that, that's just what I added. I mean, sorry, Clive, I added that one. I mean, 
No, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Life, I suppose you dream the dreams. I mean. <laughs> Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days. And they will prophesy. I will, I will show wonders in the heavens above. And signs on the earth below. I tell you, I love the signs. Give God hand for the signs. Hallelujah, man. You see, there's many funny things happening in this church. And people think we are crazy. But he said, wonders in the, in the, uh, in the heavens above. And signs on the earth below. And I love it. What signs? Well, miracles. People fall over. People laugh. People get healed. People get baptized. All sorts of great things. Give God hand. Amen. Signs, hallelujah, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire, and billows of smoke. I love it, God's presence, amen. In the Old Testament, the pillar of smoke, the, the presence of God was at the tent of the meeting. In the New Testament, it's obvious, it's everywhere. Hallelujah, amen. Everywhere where people meet and believe in Jesus and glorify God in Jesus' name, the sun will turn to darkness and the moon to blood. Before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. So what should you do to be saved? Call upon the name of the Lord. Amen. What will you do to be saved? Number one, call upon the name of the Lord. That's number one. Give God a hand. Amen. What shall you do to be saved? Everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. How do you get saved? Number one point, call upon the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. How do you call upon the name of the Lord? Well, I do it quite loud. When I need him, I say, Lord, help me, please. I don't say, Jesus, please help me. Except if I'm very tired or very sleepy. Amen. But when I'm awake and I need him urgently, I shout, like Jesus shouted unto the Father. You know that the Bible says in Hebrew, that in the life of Jesus, in, the, in his days on the earth, he cried with loud cries to the one who could save him from death. So what am I better? That I will whisper to God and Jesus cried unto him. Huh? So I cry as well, because I need him far more than Jesus needed him. Amen. Everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. And he says, fellow Israelites, listen to this. Jesus of Nazareth was a man, a man accredited by God to you by miracles. Amen. Say again with me. Everyone's going to say it with me. Jesus of Nazareth. Say it with me. Jesus of Nazareth was a man. Well, he was a man. You can give this to your dad, Vim, was a man accredited by God to you by miracles. So that's why Jesus came with miracles. And that's why I love miracles. When there's not miracles, I tell you, Jesus is not around. Huh? When there's not miracles, Jesus is not around. I tell you now. Hallelujah. Miracles, wonders, and signs, not only miracles, listen. And God, I, I read from the beginning, Jesus of Nazareth was a man accredited by God to you by miracles, wonders, and signs. Say so going to miracles, wonders, and signs, which God did among you through him, Jesus. As you yourself know, this man was handed over to you by God's, by, by God's deliberate plan and foreknowledge, and you, with the help of wicked men, put him to death. Now he's accusing the Jews' life. He said, you, with the help of other men, the Romans, you have put him to death. Say, Clive, I say to the Jews are guilty, okay? Put him to death 
by nailing him to a cross. But God raised him from the dead, freeing him from the agony of death. Because it was impossible for death to keep his hold on him. David said about him, I saw the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. I will not be shaken. Therefore my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices. My body also will rest in hope. Say to God, my body will rest in hope because I believe in Jesus. Because you will not abandon me to the realm of the dead. And I know that I know that I know that I know he will not abandon you or me. You will not let your Holy One see decay. You have made known to me the, path of the paths of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence. Fellow Israelites, I can tell you confidently that the patriarch David died and was buried. And his tomb is here to this day. But he was a prophet and, and knew that God had promised him on oath that he would place one of his descendants on his throne. And that is Jesus. Give God a hand. Amen. So that was a promise that was made by God to David. That one of your descendants will sit on your throne forever. Who is that descendant of David? The son of man, the son of God, the son of David. Give God a hand. Amen. Hallelujah. See, that was to come. He spoke of the resurrection of the Messiah, that he was not abandoned to the realm of the dead, nor did his body see decay, because he was raised on the third day. God has raised this Jesus to life, and we are all witnesses of it, exalted to the right hand of God. He has received from the Father the promised Holy Spirit, and has poured out what you now see and hear. For David did not ascend to heaven, and yet he said, the Lord said to my Lord. The Lord said to my Lord. Who is he speaking about? The Lord said to my Lord. Whose Lord is David's Lord? And to which Lord did the Lord say? The Lord said to my Lord. The Father said to my Lord, Jesus, Amen. Sit at my right hand until I, make, uh, till, till I make your enemies a footstool for your feet. Therefore, let all Israel be assured of this. God has made this Jesus whom you crucified, both Lord and Messiah. When the people heard this, and this is what I need to tell you. This is the second step to salvation. What shall you do to be saved? Listen. When the people heard this. They were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the other apostles, Brothers, what shall we do to be saved? They asked, What shall we do to be saved? The number one step, the Bible says, is right here. Call upon the name of the Lord. Number one. Number two, let me read you out of the Bible. What shall you do to be saved? Peter and the other apostles. Brethren, what shall we do? Peter replied, Repent and be baptized. You see the things you need to do. Some people say, You can do nothing to be saved. They are liars. Peter said something else here. He said, Number one, call upon the name of the Lord. Number two, repent. Number three, be baptized. And you will receive the Holy Spirit as a gift out of your Bible. Give God a hand. Amen. Hallelujah. What shall we do? Peter replied, repent and be baptized. Every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. And you will receive the Holy Spirit as a gift. So the person who is not baptized is not forgiven of his son. The Bible says so. The Bible says so. And I'm not going to change the Bible, my friend. I don't, I'm not preaching to you from the doctrine of Calvin or Luther. I don't use that things. I read to you from the Bible. God's word. When I was a child, I was sitting in the traditional churches, and they taught me out of some book 
And I was very frustrated and bored because they taught me from some other man, a Calvin and a Luther, the teachings which they believe in. I don't need their teachings. I need the Bible. And this Bible says to me, in order to be saved, you need to call upon the name of the Lord. Number two, you need to repent. Number three, you need to be baptized for the forgiveness of your sins. So that means that the person has not been baptized. I don't speak about child sprinting. That's crazy. To think that Afrikaners can vrachtig dink that om a paar drippels op a kind te gooi is hy gedoop. Want die, doop, die woord doop beteken om binnen in te gaan. I can speak Afrikaans now. As ek a beker koffie en die ochtend op my tafel sit, en ek vat een stuk beskuit, dan sê ek, nou gaan ek hierdie beskuit, binnen in hierdie koffie en doop, dan gaan ek nie, drie druppels koffie, op die beskuit gooi nie, ek gaan nou binnen en druk, en dan gaan ek weer drink wees met die koffie, en dan gaan ek om eet, dan gaan ek die koffie proe, dan gaan ek meer een droog beskuit wees, en dan gaan die koffie proe, en dan beskuit, dan gaan baie lekker wees, die woord doop, is nooit naam gee nie, en is nie drip, drie druppels koffie op een stuk beskuit sit nie, of op een kindse kop sit nie. Dit beteken, jy moet binnen in die water ingaan, of jy vat die beskuit, die woord doop in Afrikaans is baie eenvoudig. Dit is nie naam gee nie. Dit is om die, beek, die beskuit te vat, en binnen in die koffie in te doop. En om uit te haal, in jou mond te sit, dan is hy vol koffie, die sal met jou. When you get baptized into Jesus, then you are full of Jesus. You get baptized into water, a step of obedience, and it's not the water that do the thing, but it's a step of obedience that God said. And when you get baptized into water, you get baptized into Jesus. And then we are filled with Jesus, and you are acceptable to God the Father. And then the life that you start to live from there is now by the life of Jesus in you that is pleasing to the Father. And that's amazing full of joy and peace and power. And then you need to be baptized for the forgiveness of your sins. So my question is, if a person is not baptized, is his sins forgiven? No, not, not according to this. If a person is not baptized, his sins are not forgiven. The Bible says, I'm not going to change the Bible for no one. I'm going to read it again to you. Hallelujah. Okay, I'm going to give you the steps again. Peter replied, repent. And just before that, he said, call upon the name of the Lord. Number two point, repent and be baptized. Not only repentance, that's, that's almost one thing. It's two things in one. Repent and be baptized. He doesn't say repent and later on, when you made up your mind, when you decide, you believe what the people say to you, after a year or so, you get baptized. He said, repent and be baptized. It's one thing. It's one action. It's two things in, with one. With one move. Repent and be baptized for the forgiveness of your sins. And if you don't get baptized life, do you think your sins are forgiven? Or are we going to change this Bible tonight? I read it from this path, the Bible. This is the Bible. Are we going to change the Bible to suit our doctrine? Repent and be baptized. That's one step. One move. Two things in one move. And many people, they repent and then they say, Oh, I'm going to think about baptism. I'm going to think about it and pray about it. You don't have to think about it. You don't have to pray about it. You only need to read your Bible. Repent and be baptized for the forgiveness of your sins. And if you didn't do that, your sins are not forgiven you, sorry, according to this. Every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins. And you will receive the Holy Spirit, the gift of the, of the Spirit. You will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, the promise is for you and your children and for all who are far off like me and you. For all whom the Lord our God 
will call, give God a hand, amen. With many other words, he warned them. With many other words, he warned them. He warned them and pleaded with them. Save yourself. We're going to post this. It says here, save yourself. Many people say, you cannot do nothing to be saved. You only need to believe. Yet it says, save yourself, man. By doing the things that you need to do. It says here, your Bible says, in Acts 1 verse 2, or 2, sorry, Acts 2 verse 41. 40, for, for, for verse 40 to begin with. Acts 2 verse 40. Save yourself from this corrupt generation. Say to guys to save yourself from this corrupt generation. So people want to tell me, you can do nothing to be saved. What nonsense are you talking about, man? I'm a fiery preacher. Very sorry for that. And you can take this, but I now preach to everyone, please. Save yourself. People say you can do nothing to be saved. But here it says, save yourself. How do you save yourself, life? By calling upon the Lord, by repenting, by being baptized. For the forgiveness of your sin. Save yourself from this corrupt generation. Here yeah, your Bible says that. Amen. Pastor Vim, it's a little bit different than other people's doctrines. Do you think so? Huh? Give Pastor Vim a mic, please. Pastor Vim, what do you think about this doctrine I preach out of the Bible? It's a little bit different from the other doctrines that you heard before. Is that not so? Yes, but it's a, yes, Pastor, but it's a word of God. Are we reading the same Bible, yeah? Yes, it's a word Then of God. all the churches use? Pastor Vim, I ask you, how is it that they do not read this? By using their man-made doctrines. By using their man-made doctrine. They say you, you, should do, you can do nothing to be saved. Here it says, save yourself from this corrupt generation. How are you going to save yourself? By calling upon the name of the Lord, by repenting, and being baptized. You save yourself from this corrupt generation. Give God a hand. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Those who accepted this message were baptized. And about 3,000 were added to their number that day. So 3,000 people got baptized there. Give God a hand. Amen. They accepted this message and they got baptized. They got saved, man. My question is, a person that's not saved, that's not baptized, is he saved? No, he's not saved. Not according to this. I don't speak about child sprinkling. I speak about baptism as an adult. And now remember, this ministry doesn't believe in groot doop and klein doop nie. Afrikaners. Ons glo nie aan groot doop nie, en ons glo nie aan klein doop nie. Ons glo nie doop van bekering. Give God a hand, amen. We believe in repentance baptism. We don't believe in adult baptism or child baptism. We believe in the baptism of repentance in Jesus' name. Amen. I don't, I don't hear you, amen. Amen. My question is tonight, people who accepted Jesus, they didn't get baptized, are, are they saved? Are they saved? Not according to this. Must I change this to soothe your ears? To calm you down? Because maybe you get angry at me? If you're not baptized, you're not saved. If you're not baptized, your sins are not forgiven you. The Bible says so. Those who accepted this message were baptized. They didn't wait for a year and went to think about it and prayed about it. They got baptized right there. Amen. And about 3,000 were added to the number on that day. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to prayer. Everyone was filled with all at the all at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. And some churches believe today, oh, it was only for the apostles. And your Bible says God, Jesus is the same yesterday, 
today and forever. And we're very privileged that Jesus do these things in our midst. Or the Father, we read now that the Father was doing it through Jesus. And the Father is still doing it through Jesus within us. Give him a hand. Amen. Because the Bible says, greater is he that's in us than him that's in the world. Who is in you? Jesus by the Holy Spirit. They sold property possessions to give to everyone who had need every day. They continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people in those days. Till the devil got angry and they all got persecuted. Amen. Amen. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. Give God a hand. Amen. Hallelujah. Have I seen such things in my life like this that I read now? That people get added daily? Get baptized? So many? 3,000? I've seen it. Not in Polakwani. But I did see great things in Polakwani. We once got baptized. Many people got baptized. Many people got saved. But now they are saved and we wait for the new numbers to come in. But I tell you, I went to Malawi and Mozambique and I preached the gospel there. I, that was amazing. So many people got baptized and got saved. I mean, you used, we used to baptize them. I mean, we were a group of 12 people. We all stood in the river. And there was a river that come down. And the people lined up and we baptized. And we had no time to say many things. We had to just put them under water. And as they, they go down the stream and they stood up after that on their own. So life, it was not, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We just, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. And they raised themselves up from the water down the stream. So many, so many, so many, so many. And great miracles started to happen. And the Holy Spirit was poured out. And it was amazing. Many miracles, many wonders. One night, Paul will tell you, so great. I used the generator for sound and to show the Jesus film. And I said, the people must jump into the air. God said so. And if their feet touch the ground, they will be baptized with Holy Spirit and power. And that happened. And the revival broke out. And I needed the sound system. And when I started to preach, there was very little petrol because it was the last evening of this mission trip. The petrol was so little in the tank. And it was a very small generator. I thought, how is this petrol going to last? And how are these people going to hear me? Because they were, you, there were many people. They were literally thousands and thousands. And I pre took that mic, and the generator was running, and I preached. And I preached, and I preached. And we started to worship right through the night till the next morning. And the next morning, it went on and on and on till 10 o'clock. The generator, the petrol was long time, not anymore, but the generator was running by God's grace. That was a great miracle. The people started to march. Then the low felt of Malawi in the bush, from village to village, singing and praising God with all their heart. I've seen it. We must see it again. In Jesus' name. Amen. I get excited. The other night, a man from the Congo invited me to go to Congo. I think I'm going to see something like that again because these people are so hungry, so hungry, so hungry. Ask the guy, how hungry are you? And then the trip was done, but so many people came to Jesus and the revival broke out and those people went untrained, didn't go to Bible school, planted other churches in many far areas. And we had to try to visit those churches that I planted, but we couldn't visit them all. And the next trip I organized was just to baptize all these people. So shortly after that, I organized another trip. We went up to baptize all these many that, oh, there were many. So many, so many, so many. That's when we baptized them in a the river. That was so amazing. And I was teaching them on that trip about 
breaking of bread because they didn't know nothing about Christianity. Nothing, nothing, zero. I had to teach them everything. Then I taught them breaking of bread and the Lord's blood. And we baptized them. And the revival broke out again. And we pray now for revival in this Polakwani. In Jesus' name. Do you think it can happen, Clive? Well, I'm excited because that other man said, will I come to the Congo? I said, God willing, yes. I know something is going to happen there. But I've got one problem. I get a little bit older now. But when the power of God comes upon you, don't worry. Your body doesn't feel the age. Your body goes strong by the Holy Spirit. Amen. So those who stream with us and those who listen, God's the God of power. He's not the religious God. He's not the God of religion. He's not the God of dead churches. If there's not miracles, Jesus is not there. If there's not power, Jesus is not there. If there's not signs and wonders, Jesus is not there. Sorry, that's what my Bible says. Wherever Jesus is, there will be signs, wonders, and miracles. Amen. God is good. Today I want to say to you, people who say, you can do nothing to be saved, you talk nonsense. This Bible of mine says here in the book of Acts, verse chapter 2, save yourself from this wicked generation. How do you save yourself? Number one, you call upon the name of the Lord. Number two, you repent. Number three, you get baptized. And then, number four, you receive the Holy Spirit, the gift of the Holy Spirit. Number five, you speak in tongues, or you laugh, or you fall over. Something will happen. Give him a great hand. Amen. My God's not dead. My God is alive. My God is the God of power. He's the God of miracles and signs and wonders. In Jesus' name. And I've seen it so many times. And I pray it will happen more. He's the God of fire. In Jesus' name. Amen. I hope everyone here is baptized. You stream with me if you've not been baptized. You get to get baptized. I don't speak about child sprinkling. I don't speak about religious nonsense. I don't speak about man-made doctrine. I speak about the Bible. Repent and be baptized. I know of no baby that can repent. Nothing. It's one thing. Repent, be baptized. Same action, same night, same time, same day. Gee, a child cannot repent. A baby cannot repent. Repent and be baptized. Amen. Amen. If anyone that listened to me tonight and you didn't give your heart to Jesus, you didn't call upon the name of the Lord like I said tonight, you didn't repent and turn away from your wicked ways, and you didn't get baptized, I say to you, tonight they're going to lead you to Jesus, whether how many, doesn't matter how religious you are. You can be an elder and a deacon in some traditional church, I don't worry. Ten to one, you're not saved even. Because if you didn't repent and got baptized in water, I doubt your salvation. Then I want to lead you to Jesus tonight. I'm not yet to condemn you. I want to lead you to Jesus. So we pray together. Those who want to accept Jesus tonight, those who stream, those who are here, anyone here, you pray with me now, now, in Jesus' name. And you pray with me, Lord God of heaven. If your Bible says so, it must be true. So tonight I repent of my sins. I call upon your name. I repent. And I want to be baptized. Please forgive me my sin. And save my soul. Save my life. In the name of Jesus. I accept you tonight. Far more than I accepted religion in the past. Come and be my Lord Jesus. And make me a new person by the powerful Holy Spirit. 
in the name of Jesus. I accept you now. And I lay down my life. And I give you all of my life. In the name of Jesus. Fill me now with your Holy Spirit. And your love and your grace. In the name of Jesus. Amen. And amen. As you sit there in your home. You receive the Holy Spirit now. The Spirit of promise. And you get sealed by God. With the Spirit of promise. In the name of Jesus Christ, in Jesus' name. Everyone pray that prayer, then God bless you. Tonight you've given your heart to Jesus. There's a new life coming for you. You will be touched by God and God will be with you. And you will know that you know your sins are forgiven you. Everyone pray with me again. Lord God, forgive me my sins. Wash me by your blood and blot out my transgressions in the name of Jesus. I receive your forgiveness now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Think, thank you, Jesus. Amen. If you pray this prayer, your sins are forgiven you. Your sins has been blotted out. And you ask the Holy Spirit to come into you, you're a new person. Now, your life will grow. You will know that you know something changed. Your sins are forgiven you. You are lighter. The heaviness is gone. God bless you. I pray for you that God will lead you and guide you. And I say to you, you need to come and be baptized in Jesus' name. Come and be baptized in the mighty name of Jesus. We wait for you. Amen. Amen. Give God a great hand. Amen.